Welcome to Open Talk, episode number nine. Uh, it's Thursday, May 7th, um, and uh, what a crazy world it is at the moment. Um, I don't know if uh, you're in the stages I'm in or what stage you're in. Uh, I've gone through stages of being, oh my God, the world is doomed to, uh, oh my God, there's a new episode of uh, something on Netflix, and this is fabulous. Um, I know the weather definitely uh, changes my mood, and uh, Knowing that snow is coming possibly for east here is, is crazy. But uh, uh, this week I'm going to do something a little, a tiny bit different. Uh, I'm not kind of going to go into uh, these prepared questions and all like that. I'm going to have a really open talk with my guests because I'm, uh, they're fabulous. Um, and I have two guests tonight. Um, and I'm not going to uh, delay anymore. I'm going to jump right in and say hello. So please activate your cameras and mics. And uh, uh, I'm going to thank and welcome uh, Gail and Esteban for joining us tonight. Guys, hello. How are you? How are you doing? Good. Good. Hello, Travis. It's a really pleasure to be here. It's and to everybody pleasure. that is standing in. Such a pleasure to have you guys. And I want to welcome Gail Mooney and Esteban Toro to Open Talk. And first, Gail, where are you Zooming from? Zooming from Brookside, New Jersey, about 38 miles west of Manhattan. And how about you, Esteban? I'm turning from Bogota, Colombia, so it's it's a little bit far from you guys, but it's coming <laughs> from her. I'm right next door, so that's fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so how how are you guys doing this week? What what's your what's your level? Where where are you at emotionally, uh, mentally? Where, where where are you at? Well, we'll start with you. Yeah, Gail, go ahead. Um, Gail, please. Um, it's been, you know, it's been a good week because I've had, um, I need something to do. I need something to look forward to. I need hope, you know, and before that, I just, I couldn't even focus, you know, it was like, there were good days and bad days, but I just could, I had no motivation and that just isn't like me. So yeah. how about you, Esteban? Well, I, I've been feeling good. I've been, I've been trying to just follow my instinct in the sense that I, uh, uh, I just, you know, it's like, especially about my schedule, it's like I'm going to bed at uh, 5 a.m. in the morning, I'm waking up at 11 a.m. some days, and then other days I just go like 10 p.m. to the bed, and then I wake up at 2, 3 a.m., but I, you know, it's like I don't suffer, I don't suffer about this anymore, it's like I just deal with it, and I just start doing something, uh, maybe, I, you know, and then I go just online and some social media and my friends are just there and we make video calls and we laugh and it's you know like i just go with it and um, i'm trying to remain positive I, I'm, I'm trying to stay positive yes yeah. have, have you guys been suffering from the the uh, strange dream syndrome that a lot of people are having oh yeah i usually mm -hmm. never dream and i've been having some wild ones yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I definitely have had dreams. Like even this morning, I, I could have sworn my brother was yelling, and and I I woke up and I was sure he was in the house, and he he wasn't. And, and I, I'm like, oh, and I, I convinced myself that someone was there, and it was bizarre. I find myself going to sleep earlier. I'm I'm a night person. Like I don't go to sleep before two or three in the morning. I'm going to sleep at like twelve. I'm waking up at six thirty in the morning. I'm like, what is going on? I'm in a morning person. <laughs> yeah, I know. Eating birds. I bought a bird feeder. I'm like, what is going on with me? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm up at 5 a.m. and I don't even set my alarm. I mean, that's just you know, me, you know, but I like, I like my time in the morning, you know. Uh. It's like my time. So I, I, I want to talk uh, to each of you, and I'm going to go one by one. I'm going to start with you, Gail, and uh, I'm going to share some photos and stuff like that. But first, before I start sharing some photos that you sent me, um, where did photography, where did the passion for it come from? What was your, what was your first camera? Where did you, I mean, who was your mentor? How did, it, how did it begin for you? What was the, you know, the inception, the seed for it? Yeah, I'm a little um, unique in that way in that I, I really didn't get into photography until – I decided that it was a means to an end. I was studying architecture in Syracuse University and it was, you know, during Kent State, which was just the other um, day. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was like a traumatic time. They closed the school down, yada, yada, yada. I never went back and I left the country for the first time in my life. It was intended to be three months. It, it actually um, went a year. I intended to go to Europe. I ended up in Afghanistan and came back. Wow. And I hitchhiked the whole way. I shouldn't probably be alive, but um, it it made me realize that um, I wanted that lifestyle, and not just to travel, but I was curious about um, everything, you know, lifestyles, cultures, and so I thought, what could I do 
to um, give me access to that lifestyle. And I said, I'll be a photographer. Wow. So that's kind of how it started. Do you remember your first camera? Well, the, the, the first shot I remember taking was the Beatles off the TV screen. And that was with my <laughs> father's instamatic. <laughs> but my first camera was, my first real camera was a Nikon um, FTN, you know, the Photomic Finder. Yeah. yeah. I still have it, you know. Oh, and fantastic. one lens, and that was that, you know, 50 millimeter lens. And that's when I started taking pictures. Yeah. yeah. Was there a certain uh, a mentor for you or any, where did, where did the, you know, that, when did you know, like, this is, this is it for me? Yeah. Well, when, you know, when I came back, um, I realized I, I was serious. That's when I went to Brooks and that, you know, that was hard for me because I was a real free spirit and this was very technical. It was very technical back then, but I knew I had to learn that. It was also the first time I experienced um, being in a, almost an entire male environment, you know, so that really changed my life. Um, and will lead up, up to the end, you know, um, yeah. or so far. And so um, I met my husband there and, the first thing we did was we assisted different photographers and then we had the best mentor ever. And that was a man called Adrian Taylor. And he was the art director of um, travel and leisure magazine at the time. But first we did, um, if you're going to go through the, are you going to do the pictures? I'm a, Just, as we get there. Yeah. I'm listening to you. I'm we're, sorry. We're, I don't know what yeah. people see and what they don't, but um, he was, um, he was perfect. You know, he, he was the kind of guy he, he would take, um, he took a risk, let's face it, you know, and we, we began our careers as a team, Kelly and Mooney, and um, we traveled all kinds of places, and I don't really know how we landed the job other than, you know, when we got married after um, we had been together for four years, we opted instead of taking a honeymoon, we went to the British Isles and... Um, took pictures and built a portfolio. And that's when we went to see Adrian Taylor and he gave us a double page spread in travel and leisure. So that was just like, I don't know, meant to be, you know, but he was extremely encouraging. And the more he encouraged me, um, the harder I tried and the crazy, crazier I got with the ideas because we had full reign. And um, he, he, you know, he loved that and I loved that. So. It, when, it was, when were you at Brooks? Um, I entered Brooks in um, 73 mm -hmm. and left in almost 76. It was December 75. Right, right. So and then we, we moved back from California. Tom was for, from Pennsylvania originally. I was from, well, I was born in Chicago, but I was living in, in uh, New Jersey. So, you know, we moved back to um, the New York area and um, <laughs> a terrible time. I mean, you know, Look Magazine had gone under, Life had gone under the first time. And um, what did I want to do? I wanted to be a travel photographer. But, um, uh, I, you know, quickly I, I went to see, um, I was studying or apprenticing with a still life beauty guy um, assisting. And um, I built a, a portfolio like that. And I went to see Jay Mizell down in uh, the Bowery. And he um, looked at my work and it was like, you know, perfectly executed and all that. And, but my heart wasn't in and he pretty much threw it at me. And he said, <laughs> this isn't what you want to do, is it? And I said, no, not really. But, you know, everybody tells me I have to do this. The magazines are dead and da, 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 da. And he looked at me and, he, and I told him I wanted to travel. And he said, how old are you? And I said, I'm 25. And he looked at me and he said, and you're already making compromises. And that was like, mm -hmm. boom. I probably remind myself of that every day. Yeah, I think it's it, what you say is very important. It's, it's not the ones that, you know, said, oh, your photography is fantastic. Oh, you, I love what you're showing me. It's the ones that really push you to uh, question yourself and, and, and push your work into different areas. Let's go into the first picture that you sent me. Uh, why don't you tell me about this one that you, was the very first one you picked up the show? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not the norm of the first picture. But I, I was a Beatle maniac, you know. This was in uh, March, well, the snapshot, March uh, 64. So that was a month after they were on the Ed Sullivan show when I shot this off the screen. And 
that was like a record in my family, getting a, a, a roll of film developed in a month. It, usually we had every holiday, you know, like for the whole year. <laughs> and a 12, and a 12 roll, uh, 12 exposure roll. So yeah, so that, you know, and I'm so glad I had them in my snap, in my scrapbook. And obviously I didn't take care of them and I ripped them out and scanned oh. them. And, but it's just history for me. <laughs> And uh, we'll move on to the second picture here. <laughs> that that's, um, was shot on her uh, honeymoon. And uh, it was, uh, to this day, it's still my favorite p picture. And that was shot in 77. Wow. And, you know, obviously it's, it's historic now, the phone booth. But I love that man because, first of all, he must have stayed there like 15 minutes. I could have probably shot 10 rolls, but I was shooting film. So he just stayed there and, and it kind of makes you want to linger on the picture. And then you see the face in the background in the rain. And it's just, I love it on so many levels, but um, it's wonderful. That, yeah. Now this one and the next one were uh, from Travel and Leisure and they always stressed portraits. And this was a portrait of, uh, we were doing assignment on Oaxaca. And I show this picture because it's going to drive um, a lot of people crazy because you see his foot. <laughs> feet are very close to the frame, okay? Yeah, yeah. Now, that was like um, a default of mine. It wasn't a good default. <laughs> Cropping the camera. And I always crop too much. But anyway, last... So you summer, you would do it differently now? Is that what you're saying? Well, I'll tell you what I did. <laughs> Last summer, I took Mac Holbert's um, fine art printmaking class in Maine, and it was really about file optimization. And um, he turned me on to the content aware tool. And that was like, whoa, that just r changed my world. So now <laughs> my mission is to go back and fix every single you one. You just draw the, <laughs> the crop outside, and it will fill in the rest of the wall for you. You may have to. That you know, was like the hospital you'll wall toe in, but, uh, you'll be able to fill that all in no problem <laughs> oh i already did and and you know <laughs> next watching this forgive me i didn't show that one because this one had a story <laughs> and that was for um a story for travel and leisure on uh new york as an island because very few people think of it as an island so we, we were trying to come up with all kinds of ideas what to do and how to show that and we were on the, the, the tugboat that was piloting in the QE2 in the Hudson River. Oh, yeah. and, and we had to actually stop. They stopped the race because there, there were swimmers in the water. And I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> and so I'm like yelling down. I mean, I'm, you know. Which is not something you usually say in New York City, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm yelling down, excuse me, where can I get a hold of you? You know, and it was all low tech back then. And it ended up. You know, he was the mayor of Keensburg, New Jersey, and he had towed a raft full of oranges from the battery to Red Bank, I think, you know, to um, create awareness for um, Agent Orange. He nicest guy in the world. So we told him about this shot and we rented a boat out of South Street Seaport. We probably got about a roll and a half off. And, you know, we're looking blind, took our uh, viewfinders off our cameras, get them low to the water. And the boat started, um, let me just not let my computer go to sleep. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> the boat started sinking. So um, oh. we, you know, we were, <laughs> it was a, a huge story and we made it back to the seaport and literally. Um, so you shot this on film? Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, is this all natural light or? Oh, everything's natural. Everything's yeah, cool. yeah and, and, that, and the storm was rolling in. I mean, there was, there's a lot of river traffic on that river <laughs> and when you have to you know we had one guy the steering had broken so he was like sticking his feet down i'm not a nautical person but um down deep you know and steering the boat backwards and i'm like in that scene out of the old movie airplane you know he had to like slap me because <laughs> i'm seeing the staten island ferry the governor's island ferry and kind of losing it but we made it and um i'm so glad we did because Fabulous. So then um, I was telling Estevan, he was is doing a tour in China in 2020. And I was in China, this was in 1983. And I was actually in the middle of um, preparing uh, scans and slides because I wanted to do an exhibit. I figure 
37 years, wow, it's, it's so different. It's time to tell about that experience. Right. And I had wanted to go to China, I don't know, ever since I was a little kid. And that was the first or second year they allowed a, a single person to go rather than being in a group. So for me, for photography, I said, great. Um, so five weeks by myself, but I didn't, I was thinking like an American and, and I didn't plan any hotel reservations, any flights, any, any trains. And so I was, you just couldn't do that then, you know, it was, it had just come out of this communal uh, society yeah. and people just ignored me basically. Wow. But photographic was, was that good or bad? As a photographer, sometimes oh, being the, the all ignoring you, that might be the well, best thing possible. It was the best thing that ever could have happened photographically, yeah. because I just could roam anywhere I want and did. Um, but it was hard just to you know I'd have to play, you know you'll have to read my book if I ever write one. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know I would have to do tricks to like get a hotel room and things like that. Yeah. You know? yeah. But photographically, it was it was wonderful. So oh, these are kids playing in the rain. Um, this is the man in uh, the stone forest. And keep in mind, I mean, I was an oddball. You know, I'm close to six feet tall, and uh, a Caucasian woman by herself in China in 1983. It was like, wow. You know, I attracted a lot of attention. It, it, People were curious. Would they come up to you? How did they? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, everybody who was learning English came up to me and wanted to practice. <laughs> Did you find it very, <laughs> or just curiosity? What was the what was the feeling? Um, it depended on my mood, you know. It, yeah. it, you know, because I don't know about you all, but for me, travel is a very, uh, um, at least if, as a solo, as a photographer, mm -hmm. not so much as a, a, a to shoot video. It's very much a solo experience for me, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. because I I. When I'm with other people, it create it, it changes the whole rapport. Yeah, that it's a different dynamic. Do you prefer to travel alone when you're the young? You know, I do. And for that alone. reason, you know, I'm not um, I'm not one to do those kind of workshops. Yeah. You know, um, I have, you know, and I've taught video to photojournalists in China for a month. That was tough, but um, wow. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But this gentleman, but like, you know, like that, this, by the way, was all shot in Kodachrome. Some of these I opted to um, drop, drop out, you know, when I digitized them. But, you know, I, ha I had like three lenses. This was probably a 24. And I just, you know, I knew he was going slow, you know, so I figured even walking backwards, you know, I could still keep up. Right. And I was a lot younger. Is there a film that you miss uh, now that you're a digital shooter? Is there, is there, you're like, oh, uh, no. the fun memories or is it there was there one yeah. that you used consistently as a, a journalist or you know, when you were working or uh, a film yeah well it started out with Kodachrome and then probably switched to Velvia ah, yeah. only, only used Actachrome if I absolutely had to you know I, I love this shot why don't you tell us this the the forbidden city and you know um I was in the inside looking out and it's funny uh I never thought of this till now but I've always felt like I'm on the outside looking in. And sometimes people notice that about my pictures and I don't know how to take that, but I moved like 12 times before I got out of high school. So I always felt like I was on the outside looking in. Do you feel having moved so much as a child that it, it influences your, you as an adult in terms of like you always need to be somewhere new and staying in one place is difficult or? Um, no, not necessarily. I think it's made me much more flexible. You know, like I've just had to deal with change a lot, you yeah. know, and um, and so I I've never been that averse to making changes, if yeah. that makes sense. Although I do get bad dreams if I'm going somewhere before I, to this day. Are you a good traveler? You no no worries on flights or anything like that. I no, I've never. <laughs> But My I, mother I have bad dreams faster before getting on a plane, <laughs> 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 which is not fun when it's an early morning flight either. Because I'm like, I'm not sitting next to you. I'm, not gonna, I'm sitting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like these guys, they they barely looked up, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, that was great. I had moments like that, and after the curiosity um, left, I just you know I, I do a lot of hanging around. 
So a question, yeah. you, you made a comment, they didn't look up. Uh, do you find uh, from shooting years ago and when you were shooting on film, not that the yeah. film has anything to do with it, but shooting in a world that wasn't so used to every single person having a camera, do you find that it is now very different shooting in any place you're going, that they're more conscious of cameras, they're more, oh, yeah. you know, they will look up. It's like, how has that changed for you as a photographer, say 20 years ago to now? Well, I have a sort of a rule for myself, you know, if I, I will not ask to take their picture, but if they look up, I will. Yeah. Or I'll motion, okay? Um, I try to be a fly on the wall and it was certainly a lot easier then. You know, but again, you know, I was a six feet and Caucasian woman from, from, from the moon, as far as they were concerned, I think. This is uh, an amazing place uh, called the Stone Forest. And um, it's one of those things you would think of that is just made up in a movie. It just doesn't look real. It's yeah, well, uh, the, the, the story was there's only one bus in and one bus out of this back then anyway. And basically one hotel to stay in and the bus didn't leave till three. And the first thing I saw when I walked into the hotel, hotel room was a sign over the bed that said, um, check out time is 9 a.m. or you will be punished. <laughs> oh my God. Now, if I had had a phone that took pictures, I would have shot that. Right. Yeah, but yeah. I wasn't going to like put a role in the film and you know, I mean, those are the ones that got away. <laughs> How about this? All right, that was my first um, assignment for the National Geographic Traveler magazine. Oh, wow. And it was in Montreal, um, a mural artist. And um, that was a dream of mine, uh, working for the Geographic. And I'd go down to Washington probably every three months for maybe three years till I got this job. And my, my aspiration was to work for the Yellow magazine. And, um, you know, it's probably, I probably went the way I should have, you know, but that was my, my goal. And I had already come from kind of a more, um, so, I'll say soft travel uh, reportage, you know? Yeah. Um, and he saw me that way, Gilka. Now Gilka was the art director and he had a sign on his door to his office, you know, made out of like the, the doormat material. And it said, wipe your knees before entering. That was the sign on his door. Now he was a big teddy bear, but you know, he was also a man of few words and I'd be, I'd be in and out, you know, and pff, as long as you could look at a tray of 40 slides, right? Which for him, five minutes. And, um, but I would play tricks and I'd go down there and I'd do one liners of stories I wanted to do. And I, my record was, I was in there an hour, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is from a, um, an assignment I almost didn't take. It was for Smithsonian, and I was a city people shooter. And this was the assignment was on Arthur County, Nebraska, the smallest county population-wise in the United <laughs> States. And it was probably one of the best assignments I've ever done. Oh. So I I I learned to be open, you know, yeah. and. This was um, Sam Carr, he's a blues drummer. Um, a wonderful three hour interview with him. So, you know, I have a wonderful um, capsule of, I don't know, six or seven of these guys. They're all gone now. And I, it was multimedia, so I shot stills and I was just shoot, I was just going into digital. So I was shooting stills with digital and film and then um, video with my XL1 camera. So. You know, it was quite a chore, but was that transition for you going from from film to to where you uh, did you accept the you know digital? Was it a t tough transition? Did you fight it? Uh... Well, I went to digital video before I went to digital stills, only because it enabled me to shoot video without a big crew and a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. And then I quickly switched to digital um, stills, which I'm sure made it uh, easier after going from video to uh... yes and no, yeah. <laughs> And then the last two are a couple of recent, um, this is probably the last um, international trip I took a couple of years ago. Uh, I think that was in Hanoi, it was in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And um, in the last a one- A very I, special place, I've been there. And it's yeah, oh yeah. I probably stood there for 
I had two hours shooting scooters, you know. I, I love these little boats. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, um, I, I, I belong to another uh, trade association uh, other than ASMP, APA, and this was uh, the Society of American Travel Writers. And they have um, mostly writers, although a lot of the writers are photographers too, and a few professional photographers. And this one, um, the, you know, they have the muster awards every year. And this one, 2019, this in a single subject portfolio. So, so you know, I like to say I might be a dinosaur, but I'm not extinct, you know? I can still <laughs> win. <laughs> <laughs> So, so this next one, I know you wanted to start with, and I, I force you to, to, to end with uh, the, this share. Uh, why don't you tell me about uh, what we're about to kind of look upon? Okay. So this is a 50 second um, tease uh, about a, a feature film that I have been working out. It started on as um, profiles of women, video profiles of women who were working in male dominated professions, which there's quite a lot of them <laughs> still. And um, I, my whole goal was to uh, motivate and inspire other uh, women and young girls uh, to possibilities. And um, up until, you know, I've been doing this for five years and then a friend uh, kind of coaxed me into making a feature out of this, which I did with the intention that I will go back to doing um, a series because it's meant for a series. I, I could do this till I die and sadly, I'll never run out of male dominated professions <laughs> and work, but um, I'll be happy if that happens. So, um, so wait, you know, I'm going to share it and then we're going to discuss it. Sure. So, so let's do that. As a woman, you have to prove yourself a little bit more than the boys. People are always going to check where the girl finished at the end of the race. Everybody looks over at me. They have this idea that they're going to test me and see if I'm going to be scared. We always talk about if you could do anything in the world, what would it be? I think I want to learn how to fly a helicopter. And so I did. This is a great time to be a woman. I am one of three active female blip pilots in the world. Being a female, you know, is still something new in racing. If you look at Formula E paddock, I'm the only one. I have a goal and I'm going to reach it. So um, tell me about this piece just quickly. That uh... okay, so, um, so anyway, I went back into production in the, the summer and d did quite a lot of traveling. Uh, Montana, I don't know, Las Vegas, South Dakota and um, met some great, interviewed some great women and um, spent probably from Christmas till, I don't know, the end of February, pretty much in isolation editing this film. And right when I was to a point where I was finished, um, the world kind of stopped and everybody went into isolation, I mean, quarantine. And I had already been kind of in quarantine for two months already. So um, then I, you know, I said, all right, I'm gonna hit the pause button and I'll probably hire a composer for the score and um, maybe, you know, get someone to tw uh, tweak the sound and use my time. But I, I went on, I think it was an open talk. Yeah, with Katrina and you and I, I was asking like, when's the right time to release a movie? It's all about empowered, empowering women. It just didn't seem quite right. And you both were very emphatic that um, people need inspiration now. And so mm -hmm. I um, totally sort of changed um, my strategy and um, did a mail a lot of investigation on women's conferences that had been canceled or were going virtual. And so I said, this is my moment. I can offer screenings, private screenings with Q and A's. And that's possible now. So with that, I'm going to move on to our, our other person in the waiting, Esteban. Esteban, tell me about yourself. Where did you first get started and what was your first camera and how did this all, this whole, this photography thing ruin you and become to a profession? All right. Thank you. Uh, I was just uh, amazed looking at Gail's work. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I was 
Well, you know, uh, I, I have always wondered where did it start? And then I remember when I was like eight years old, my mom gave me like this, uh, yeah, like camera, like this really old camera to take up, like take photographs in a trip I was going with, with a friend. And um, I remember I got so excited about, uh, you know, like getting all this camera and, you know, I didn't know how to use it. And it was just like a, a point and shoot camera, but still I enjoyed it a lot. But I, I couldn't say that was the beginning of my work as a photographer. I will say it started off like uh, when I was around 14 years old, I, I was... Um, I was trying to become a musician and um, I was playing guitar and bass and the, but then then I just met photography and then I had to decide like, okay, what I'm gonna do with my life? I, I will put some time on, on music or I will do it for photography. And in that sense, I just uh, decided to go more into photography because it, it uh, somehow pushed me to go outside and discover the world. Because you know, if you want to do photography, you have to, go out and take pictures and uh, that really uh, interests me and then I decided to to start working into photography like I started getting into it that was the beginning first the first camera was like <laughs> the first camera was a it was a Kodak uh, you know like it's something like that but the first like uh, I remember that after that I had a Nikon F1 uh, that I still have and then like the first digital was like Nikon D4E, D4EX so and now you shoot for who? <laughs> I should. I. I. I well. I, <laughs> that's a tricky question. I got you there. <laughs> now I'm a Sony ambassador. So yeah. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. I know we're all Sony shooters. That's, that was coincidence. It just happened to be. <laughs> so uh, I uh, obviously asked you to share some photos with me, and you sent seven. And uh, and after looking, you know, and knowing your work, I added a bunch more. So <laughs> let's let's uh, let's go into. I'm going to share, uh, and you can talk about these photos as I as I share. Sure. Um, so let's go into this, and uh, hopefully this goes a little smoother. So let's go into the first photo here and why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, well, I, I just, I think uh, when, when you told me like, okay, just pick up like seven pictures, I said like what I'm gonna show there. And then I decided to go back like uh, to this festival that is the Holy Festival. Mm -hmm. um, it takes place in India. Uh, basically it celebrates the end of the winter and the beginning of the spring. So there are thousands of thousands of people gathering together to, you know, like uh, celebrate, uh, play with color, water. It's, it's a really, I would say mess, but it's also like a really interesting place to be, especially to photograph. And uh, when I just like saw this picture, like one of these pictures of the Holy Festival that I have attended for two years, uh, I just thought like, you know, how how this will change in the future with the situation we are going through with the coronavirus okay. so then i just thought like this will this ever happen again like so many people in one place celebrating and you know like uh, and you can see through the pictures that i uh, if, if you want to keep like going uh, i i took this uh, like i document this this uh, festival from different angles and people is really close like nearby one by each other and i think like you know, it's all the opposite that we are supposed to do now in this quarantine. So where are you so, positioned in taking these photos? Uh, well, the first two, I was in a balcony. Uh, this is an, an interesting story. It's like, uh, since this, are, this is a really crowded place, uh, I figure out how to go into a balcony that is allowed only for, you know, for a for like militars and uh, people from the army and then then i just i just went from there and i had an, a fantastic point of view uh talk but it, it was that. really hard to talk your way into that or how did you finagle getting that vantage point the first the first time i just i just like talk with the with the guy in the, at the entrance and he just allowed me but the second time it was really hard because there was like this crazy uh guy that didn't allow didn't want me to be there and uh, he just basically like pushed me and you know it was it was a really big trouble to be there 
but uh, I managed to to, to 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 be there. And in this one, like uh, in the first one, I was shooting from the balcony, but it was the first year I went in 2018. But last year, I decided like, okay, I have to I have to go down there and shoot from the ground. The first year, I wasn't so like convinced to go there because I thought like, what's gonna happen with my camera? And uh, you know, it, it seemed a little bit dangerous to be in there, especially because there was a lot of uh, a lot of water involved. And then I, the next year, I just decided like I have to go in. I have to see how it feels from there. And I, I feel I personally like more the pictures that I got from from the ground than from from the balcony because it felt like more, more like real close. I don't know. And so uh, that's what I got. Your camera in plastic, and how are you preparing your camera for this? Uh, I just said like let's. I mean, I just I just wrap it in, in plastic. <laughs> Yeah. and let's do it but you know it's like it's so intense it, it takes around like five, five four or five hours to be there and um at the end it, it's really really hot i mean like uh you're sweating uh, they throw you water and especially it's it's something i personally had to struggle with it's that uh, they saw that i had a camera and they tried to to throw me water and i was like you know like trying to avoid the the, the water and then trying to um, to get not to get dust in the camera, but right. uh, I think it was like really interesting to see how how you can how the cameras can resist these harsh conditions. Yeah, it's uh, uh, is it something you would do again, or is it like I've done that? I'm gonna check it off. <laughs> well, you know, every time, like the first time I went to the Holy Festival, I said uh, this is the last time I'm gonna do it next year i wanted to be there and the last year when i was there i just i remember i was with my videographer that i'm gonna tell you a little bit more about and i just told her like you know this is the last time i'm gonna do the holy festival and i <laughs> this year i was thinking like i can't wait to go again and document the, the holy from different angles and you know like they get different stories so every time i say like i will not go back again but in the end i'll i'll return oh that's fabulous sure. And how about, th obviously, this is you. Yes, uh, this is like, yeah, I just picked this picture. Like, I mean, like, I don't only focus on, on the Holy Festival or India. I, I, my, my job is to travel around the world, different places, document cultures, uh, landscape, people. And um, this is a really nice picture that I like from last year. So this is a little bit about yeah, me. Yeah, that's, that's Namibia. Absolutely. Absolutely beautiful. One of the places that's definitely on my list that I haven't been yet. Uh, so oh, we'll you have to talk to you about that. Uh, and tell me about this. Yes, this. Uh, well, you know, like um, then when all this quarantine started, it was like, well, uh, what I'm gonna do? I'm a travel photographer. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I should be, you know, right now I should be attending the Palm Springs Photo Festival. I was supposed I, I was to be supposed there too. To we both would have yeah. both been there. <laughs> So, you know, it's like, uh, I just started like figure out, figuring out like what I'm gonna do. And then I decided like, okay, uh, I can stop like thinking about photography. And I, this is a workshop I have, I have uh, uh, been doing for a couple of years now that it's like a, a Lightroom and Photoshop uh, editing. And then I decided to do my first online workshop in Spanish. So it has been really successful. Uh, I have, I mean, I just launched it like, uh, one week ago and I, right now i think i have like more than 650 students which i think is fantastic that's great uh i'm gonna go into uh i know you didn't put up a video but i pulled one of your videos
yeah, this is a, a video I shot uh, from 2018 to, and 2019. And um, it's it's you know it's about my job. It's about the work I do, and uh, I wanted to have like a, um, yeah, like a, you know, like a, how to introduce myself when I wanted to show what the, the works that the work that I do, and then I decided it was the best, the best way to do it. Yeah. So, so when I saw this, uh, obviously I, I became a professional photographer about five or six years ago, and each year I've. Um, push myself to go to more and more exotic locations. And, mm -hmm. and last year I went to like three or four this year, I was on track to go to three or four. Um, when I watched this, I, at first I was giddy with like, Oh my God, these places are so beautiful, so fantastic. And I want to be there. And then I'm thinking, when, when is it going to open back up? Is this ever going to be quite the same? And I, I kind of got weepy and sad. Like, how are you feeling right now in terms of what you do is travel and what you do is experience people and, and being very close and empathetic and, and, and being, you know, part of people and groups. How has this changed? What is, what's going on in your mind in all of this? Well, I think it's, uh, it's a little bit complicated. I think it's going to take uh, maybe a couple of years to be, something similar that we do what we were used to i think the world it's gonna return to to some things that were happening i think we will not stop uh exploring our planet because it's i think it's in our nature to to go and explore these places and uh of course i'm really afraid that's what really makes me like uh really worried like uh it's not about like when I will be able to go out. It's like, uh, I hope that, that by the moment I, I can go out, I can go and keep working on this. But even if the, if the world changes, it's like, you know, we have to adapt to it and we will have to figure out. Uh, I want to share a couple more of your photos here just because they're, they're quite stellar. And maybe you can tell us a little about them. Yeah, and this is uh, this is fantastic because because we were just discussing with Gail and actually with you that this video is talking about like China 2020. I had a workshop. Uh, I have a workshop still. It's it's supposed to take place in October uh, this year. Uh, I don't know if it's, it's totally sold out. It's totally sold out by now. Fantastic. Well, if someone and drops I, out because of this, I expect the first phone call. <laughs> 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 I hope that uh, you know it's like we were discussing with Kel like about China and we were saying like um, how how difficult will be for people to trust in China in general and it's gonna be hard and I hope that I, I am really expecting that if it doesn't happen this year it'll I will definitely do it in 2021 yeah. uh, because I think China is absolutely gorgeous and it's a really different culture from ours but I think it's uh, fantastic and I don't think uh, we should be somehow um, racist about what is going on because it could have happened in every in any place of the world what, now, what going now I, I, obviously I gravitate like to your work because I, I, I grew up in film and TV. I worked in film even before I um, even thought about being a photographer. And uh, your, mm -hmm. your style is very cinematic. Is this something you developed over time or is it you've always felt this way? Or like how did, how did your style uh, develop to this? Um, you know, I, I, I think, well, maybe I, I studied uh, visual arts in university and then I had a, like a, I focus on the, on film. So maybe somehow it, 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 it just, uh, pushed me there. But to be honest, it's not something I, I am conscious of. It's not like, okay, I want to create this cinematic images. It's just what I do. It's like, uh, it just happens. And, uh, it's always interesting when people ask me like, uh, about about this like how do you plan it so much like you think about and i do think about the light i do think about the colors and and i plan a lot my shots but it's like it just happens it's just what it's there i'm just documenting it with my camera so how much are you discovering these shots and how much are you setting up these shots i mean are, are they you know setting up lights outside or are they you're taking natural light and throwing dust up or what are, how are you accomplishing a certain repeatable shot yeah, it depends. It depends from shot to shot. Uh, there are some shots that I have just uh, look. It's it's. I do it this way. Uh, every time I travel, I try to have some photographs in my mind. So I go like, okay, I will have these pictures when I go back home, and then I start planning. And sometimes I draw the pictures that I imagine, and I think like, okay, I want to, you know, I want to wait for 
a girl or maybe a lady to cross this river and then I'll be waiting there and then I can get it. In that sense, I go for that picture and then I discover some more interesting things, but I know what I want. And in that sense, I get, uh, I get the pictures that I'm looking for and then I get some other pictures that I didn't plan. Um, some pictures I just uh, go, you know, like go, for example, with these kids, I just, um, I feel I'm so lucky when, when I'm traveling and I met this man in Myanmar who used to attend a monastery and he used to be a monk. So he said like, you want to, you want to document monks? You can come with me. And um, I know all of them and we can go to school and we can join their ceremonies and we can jo join everything about them. And I was like, you know, this is a really <laughs> big chance. I mean, I, I said yes immediately. And then, then I just, uh, you know, like I start doing it. And then I, I was, I, I got like a little, like really good friends with uh, this uh, little monks. And then we start like doing pictures in, you know, one location, we went to another, we had lunch together, we, and then it just happens. And yeah. Yeah. It, it's fabulous. I know I have a couple more shots of you. I mean, obviously, you know, your use of light and color and design, it's a, uh, pretty incredible and you know extremely you. cinematic in here yeah for example this picture you know the story uh many people is like asking me like uh he was posing for you or something like that and you know i was this is in the old delhi train station i was just walking i spent like a whole afternoon walking in the train station and then you know like i i was just trying to see something interesting. I just took the camera, take the picture. Many of them were just like moving. They didn't want to, uh, they didn't want me to take the picture. And when I noticed that, I just, uh, you know, like uh, didn't point to them. But uh, I remember this guy, I, I just look at him and I just show him the camera. You know, like this is a really fast connection because they are like yeah. all the time, like coming and going. And uh, he just looked at me. And when I show him the camera, he just went like, he, he just posed. And uh, that natural, was like, absolutely yeah. Natural. And, and uh, then I got the show. I mean, this is, this is like having worked on film productions, this would have taken like hours for them to light properly. The blues in the background, the colors, the shadows. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's <laughs> but it and just happens this is, naturally. This is the last image that I wanted to end on with your stuff. And why don't you tell us about mm -hmm. the, the story on this shot? Yeah, the first, you know, uh, the first time I, I saw this shot, uh, I was really inspired by this. It was in the... Uh, Sony uh, SWPA, the um, yeah the Sony World Photography Awards, uh, and I I was just so amazed by this that I decided to start uh, reading what what was said about, and then I realized it's it's like a, it's um, like a theater in northern China, but then you know I had to I had to made a long 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 trip to get into this into this function. And uh, I, I just made it and I love this, you know, like the colors and the representation they're doing of traditional China, which of course doesn't happen anymore. But uh, at the same time, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting because this, I think this photograph makes you like dream about something and somehow like evokes your, yeah, your imagination and your feelings. And then you start like, thinking what it will be and then you realize it's like theater and it's fantastic too because it's like well it's not what i expected but it's like uh something also interesting yeah um so i want to talk to you both now um where were you when you kind of discovered that this whole pandemic was not a flu it was not something that was going to be mm -hmm. like oh this is just going to pass quickly how was that transition for you what was the when did you actually in your head, did it click like, oh, wait, the world's now different. This is, this is, I'm, I'm, something's different. Gail, I'm going to start with you. Uh, when did it really kind of hit you or has it hit you in, in what gravity? And no, Yes and no. I mean, you know, like I was already sort of living like this, you know, and um, I, I've been thinking a lot about, you know, like, I mean, change is slow. Right. You know, I look at it like the women's movement. Yeah. It's changed in 40 years, but, it didn't seem like it, you know, you don't, you know what you know. And I think this, I don't know. I, I don't think this will ever get back to the way it used to be, perhaps <laughs> not in my lifetime. No. So when I think about that, 
I get a little sad, but then again, you know, I'm, I roll with the punches. I've had to do that pretty much most of my life. And this is like the ultimate punch, right? I mean, I don't know. I can't was there really... a certain like day? I mean, were you like, oh, oh I'm not scheduled to do this. I'm like, oh, wait, the world's been canceled. Was there, there's an, was, or just, it just kind of, you, each day was a natural progression. There was no, like. No, I, I think that's where I'm, I'm a little bit different in that, you know, I've kind of, um, gone away from assignment work just because yeah. I've gotten older and it's like, you know, if it wasn't hard to be a woman, it's even harder to be an older woman. So <laughs> at the same time, you know, I, I, I just have so many of my own ideas, yeah. whether they're in still or um, motion that, you know, I call them self-initiated projects because my intention is to make money. Right. And if I say personal, um, well, they're all personal, right? It's just how it's perceived. Yeah. yeah. And, and for you, Esteban, was there, was there kind of a, and you're in a different part of the world. So what's it like where you are and, and how did you come to any kind of. I mean, we're having a really right now uh, in Colombia, we're having a really strict like uh, lockdown. So we are basically not allowed to even like go outside and, you know, it's like going to the market. It's really complicated. Like people, like last week, people were allowed for the first time in two months to go and exercise. People were, you know, like going crazy about this quarantine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember it was uh, two months ago, I was traveling in Colombia. I was filming uh, for, I was filming a documentary and we were with the crew uh, seated in this restaurant and uh you know one of them just took off their phones and he said like oh you know for we have the first coronavirus uh patient in colombia and we was we were just laughing about it like yeah so when we go back it will be three and you know like we were just like really relaxed about it yeah. and then we went inside in this this like our really deep into uh in you know in the colombian field and then then when we returned it was like everything was supposed to be closed and uh, we we were really lucky to be reach home uh, to be able to reach home and we did it and that was it i mean since then i've been here <laughs> for how has it affected you i mean was it like one day like i'm supposed to be doing all these different travels and these trips and then suddenly it's like i'm stuck at home and everything's canceled uh you know i i am Although traveling, it's like when you, it's like uh, people, when you tell them like, I'm a travel photographer, uh, they think that you're all the year round traveling and going to different places, but actually it takes a lot of uh, pre-production about planning, about, uh, you know, like talking with your fixers, uh, yeah. knowing where you go. So I'm really used to spend a, a lot of time uh, in lockdown, uh, just in front of the computer, <laughs> sending emails, uh, video chatting, uh, stuff like that. So at first it was not that hard for me because I, I felt like, okay, I'm going to work in stuff that I have in the future, September, October to see, because I, I, I thought like, okay, by September it will be over. So let's work on that. And, uh, well, right now I am just enjoying, <laughs> I'm just trying to, yeah, to enjoy what, what, what I can. What is it like in another country viewing, the United States at this point. I mean, it, it, are you having discussions like I can't believe that like it's an issue they're protesting and staying at home? Like, what what is the kind of common viewpoint of where you are judging America and and what's going on here? Well, you know, uh, I think um, Colombia has a really like a Colombia depends a lot on the United States. Uh, maybe you don't know this, but it's like we are really related and I feel our culture is really like American somehow. So um, we were expecting a lot of the United States, you know, like, yeah, we have the vaccine or we have the a medicine for coronavirus and now we're seeing what is happening and it's like, oh, this is getting really horrible there. and. Um, but I think at the same time, it's like, um, you know, it's, it's, it's getting, it's getting worse, but, um, but we, I like, nobody knows what to do. So it's like, okay, if you don't have anything better to say, it's like, um, yeah. So, um, Gail, yeah. 
how has anything like substantially changed for you like your daily rituals or, or do you find yourself like oh no i'm used to staying at home and my life hasn't changed that much or now you find yourself you know going to sleep earlier and waking up earlier what how's life changed or altered at all for you um, you know i not a lot i i you know i get up early and um i I, like I said, in the beginning, I'm, I'm pretty positive. I, that resonated when Esteban said that, you know, that's like, yeah, I'm a half um, full kind of person, but I need to be forward thinking. And, and I also started thinking about, I know this isn't your question, but no, go ahead. I also started thinking about mentors and um, certainly my perspective since, um, you know, my perspective is I had, incredible mentors in my life. And um, I would say that all of them were considerably older to me and older than me. And I don't see that as much. And I started thinking about that during this because I'm thinking maybe there'll be more intergenerational, you know, just because of what's been happening with these, you know, older people dying and their parents, I mean, their kids, their grown kids can't see them and all this drama right i mean that is that's pretty profound and i know that you know when i started out that was kind of how you got started you know you, you apprenticed you learned from the the people that came before you and i don't see that and i started thinking about that and i certainly think that technology kind of created a divide if you will like when things went digital yeah. And then it, it sort of separated itself. And I'm wondering and kind of hopeful that um, it, it becomes more intergenerational intergener for, for, for both people's um, behalf, you know. And yeah. um, I was speaking to um, actually a chatting with a woman who actually gave me my first solo assignment. And it was oddly enough for a met, her name's Gail Towers. Maybe she's still on, but she um, was one of the few female art directors and she gave me an assignment. Um, gosh, it had to be in the early eighties and it was about a little girl, 12 years old, and she was playing on an all boys soccer team for women's sports magazine. And um, that was like unheard of back then. And she had no other team to play on. I mean, there was no girls team, you know, sports team. And that seems like, you know, I mean, you know, I don't want, I'm not like the kind of person who walked three miles in the snow, you know, but <laughs> you know what I mean? there's, it, there's perspective is what yeah. I'm trying to say. And I think, um, you know, if I was to tell someone young starting out, I would probably tell them just be curious and be open to all kinds of influences, not just photography, you know, yeah. it could be gardening, it could be, um, paint paintings it could be music and i just think that curiosity that comes with travel is just good for everybody you know because yeah. um it's kind of you know the total opposite of being ignorant you know and that mm -hmm. that's what causes fear so i've been thinking a lot i know that wasn't your question <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> As you know, I'm kind of a stream of consciousness. <laughs> That's why I and, wanted you on here. I know. <laughs> and I'm just thinking about the whole mentor thing. And yeah. I think, I, and, I, and, and I thank you so much for this community that you're building because it can be an isolating profession anyway, you know, mm -hmm. and it certainly is now. And it's, it's a community that's specific to a smaller community. Yeah. And that's unusual. And I also think, you know, I used to be very involved with ASMP and you as APA. And I, I, to be perfectly honest, when people would say, why should I be a member? You know, I would say advocacy, but I never had a great reason until now. Yeah. And they and, and, have and both stepped up. That. The most important thing for me was now more than ever, 
Yes. Why would I want to be a member of something? And yes. it's so important now community and support and knowing you're not alone and that we're exactly. here for each other and that we're going to go through this and get through this together. And yeah. uh, we may not have the right answers, but we're going to ask a lot of the right questions exactly. and we're going to have these open talks. And, and thank you for going. I don't even remember what the original question was because this is open <laughs> talk and I want people to really kind of dive into and explain themselves and where they're at. And uh, Esteban, as part of a larger community and, and dealing with a lot of photographers, are people asking you like I'm scared what am I going to do what are this what are you taught what kind of conversations are you having with other photographers right now well um you know it's like I remember yesterday I received a call for a, a call from from the producer the filming we were doing before the quarantine and he just told me like you know we have to keep we have to keep filming so we will do this and this and for the first time I was laying on my bed listening at the phone and I felt like really scared to go outside like I was just thinking like crossing that door I'll be like really scared and I was like wow when when did I become afraid of uh, going outside yeah. um, but at the same time it's like it's really amazing what is happening uh, about like this you know like I'm in Colombia uh, you're in New Jersey and you, you're in New York and then we're sharing with people that can be uh, getting in from any place in the world and i have been able to finally like talk with photographers editors and people that i have always wanted to meet uh because of this so i mean it's like yeah we we're isolating somehow but we are creating i think a bigger community that will i think this will remain on time I think uh, this will not disappear after the virus. We will we will see, uh, you know, like new festivals, and and actually we're seeing this like uh, Eddie Adam Eddie Adams workshop will take place online this year, or I think it will happen something like that with Palm Spring, and you know, have you seen, it's like, have you seen the drive-in rock concerts and the concerts that are popping up? Yeah. I mean, some like those. Of, yeah, some of this stuff is unbelievable and crazy. I think there there'll be a new normal, and uh, and 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 I hope you know through all this that uh, we understand uh, to put yourself in other people's shoes, to have empathy, to reach mm -hmm. out and and help each other, and know that we are a community. Because it, at this point, I, I really feel it in the USA more now than ever. Uh, these last couple of years, um, people have been more quick to be like what divides us instead of our commonalities and we have so many more commonalities and why are we yeah. always looking for the one thing that divides us and i think we need to let that go because right now um we're all going through the same things on a global scale and there's never been something that like this in our mm -hmm. lifetimes and hopefully not yeah. again but you know mm -hmm. now is the most important thing as a community like everybody thinks what am i going to do yes there's the fear of of the future there's the fear of uh eating and there's fear of my my financial stability but also at the same time as an artist you only get one shot at something like this in terms of sharing your voice that for something that is so momentous that's going to go down in the archives for everybody to have and no matter where you are your voice is important and you need to figure out your voice right mm -hmm. now because if you're even at home alone if you're out uh, with uh, first response responders and and you can ha tell a story and that story is so important right now what are you guys doing right now in terms of new stuff have you been inspired to work on new stuff what what sort of kind of Phoenix has come up from the ashes in this for you guys that you're working on and trying to stay motivated. Go ahead, you want to go first? Go. Oh, all right. I, will begin. <laughs> um, I wasn't quite sure about sharing this story, but um, I'm just starting like a new relationship. And uh, this girl is uh, right now based in Russia. And, uh, you know, it's quite, it's quite interesting because I have been like, taking like pictures of you know like our virtual conversations and it's like I am really fascinated with these pictures like it's something I have never done in the past and now I look at this photograph like we're just I don't know like singing and I just take the camera with me and I'm also documenting story and I, I think it will be amazing uh, you know in the future to just remember this like wow I think it's such an important story to tell right now and it's you know it's like love in 2020 and it couldn't be like yeah. more like 2020 like <laughs> everything is virtual uh you know it's like and i'm like and also she's like you know like it it happened just like this and um but it's like uh, as i as i told her it's like uh you could be around the corner and we will be able to see each other because of quarantine so yeah. uh you know and it's it's really that's a project i have been really motivated oh, with working on
And yeah. Miguel? I, you know, I haven't felt motivated to shoot. And yet, um, I, I'm, I'm totally moved by people yeah. that are. But I, I guess because, um, you know, it's hard for me to be still, you know. And, I, and I'm learning to be still. And that's not easy for someone like me. But I think it's time to do that just because I think I need to spend some time um, uh, working on some legacy stuff, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I've got mixed feelings about it, you know? And maybe it's, it's kind of a message. Well, hey, that's the time for that. Yeah. What has been sort of the, the darkest period for you here? What, 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 is, what demon has kind of sunk in? I know for me, uh, it took a long time for it to come in. Uh, I, the first several of weeks I was diving into creating these uh, shows and webinars and then, uh, and then I guess kind of burnt out and then I was shooting some stuff to keep me entertained. But then like I said at the opening of the show, it was like, wow, it was it, the realization that my whole life to this point is going to be different going forward possibly. And that for me, really putting my hands around that really mess with my head and, and knowing that I've worked so hard and, and found my, after all these years, found my passion of photography. And this year was going to be a banner year for me of all these, you know, companies I was working with, these trips I was going to take, and they've all been canceled. Like everything is wiped out from my, yeah. my, my calendar and the future is like, we don't know what photography is going to be like or how quickly it's going to open back up or what restaurants are going to open, if it's going to open, like what the world is going to look like. And that started really seeping in my head. And I went to a dark place for a little while. And it was like, you know, you got to keep positive. You got to keep positive. But it, it kept was banging through my wall. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm panicking. What was have you gone through some periods or what, what dark yeah. things have you encountered yourself? Yeah, I mean, I was having a bad day once and I, I mentioned it to Tom, my, my husband. We're in the same boat, you know. We've never done anything but photography. Um, uh, we've never had a real job as my mother used to, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I, I remember being down and, uh, and he was in a bad mood or something. And I remember being down and he said, well, get used to it. And that was like, it. that was like, oh, I can't get <laughs> used to this. You know, I just like totally had a meltdown. But yeah. um, it's little things that you, that, it hit me from by surprise, you know. I think that's what's strange. <laughs> How about you, Esteban? Have you had some? some I have it. Yes, I, I have it like at least uh, two times per week that I am just laying <laughs> in my bed. Two times an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and I just realized like, oh my God, I've been trapped here for two months. Uh, like what's next? And you know, it's like, like, it's funny about our government because they, we are in quarantine, we're in lockdown, we're not allowed to go outside. And uh, they, I feel they are afraid to say how much it will take to, reopen so they are like every every they say like okay uh on may the 5th we will reopen and then when it's like may the 1st they go like okay uh quarantine will go until may the 25th and then you're like oh my god you know I, but you so also you're, you're not even allowed out outside no i mean like only if you work with a uh, healthcare you know like uh, hospitals or things that or food things or so to go for like a walk or a run that's no what about getting food or supplies or until until next week until last week it wasn't allowed and uh getting food uh you had like it, it's been like really strange like we have like days that men are, are allowed to go to the supermarket to get supplies and days for women too so it's like it's strange so you have to start thinking like okay today i can go outside uh but you know we we are really used to order things uh Yep. like deliveries and then yeah, yeah. then i i haven't go outside yet because of that which it, it kind of baffles me because i get very frustrated when people aren't taking it seriously here and you see like the first sunny day and everybody's out in the park sitting next to each other and stuff like that you're not even allowed to go out and here we're kind of abusing the ability to actually go out and get exercise and you know and and to be responsible social distancing which drives me crazy because even when i go to the grocery store and i put on my masks and like i remember the first time yeah. i went like the first week i'm like i'm gonna i feel like an idiot i'm gonna be the only one in there with this mask and, like, <laughs> and then i put it on and 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 now it's like if you walk into a grocery store and you don't have a matter you're not that person with that everyone looks at you like you're the you're the, the person yeah. that's, you know so right now i think it's it's bizarre that you know you're not even allowed outside 
How is that? Uh, you, how is that? How are you dealing with that on a day level? What are you doing? Anything differently? Any rituals? Do you make yourself? I'm going to get up at this time. I'm. Gonna, or are you just like kind of day by day? Or are you trying to stick to something? I have I, I have like uh, some routines. So for example, I try to do exercise uh, one hour every day. So that helps a lot. Um, I try to go day by day, but I mean, like, I think it's really, I, I don't see a ba- as a bad thing that you actually go outside and uh, enjoy it for a walk or maybe, you know, like uh, I, I was just uh, seeing this photographer from California, Chris Borg, Chris, uh, yeah, Chris, you know him. Yeah, yeah, of course. Chris, yes. I've uh, he, he was with, with him. <laughs> Yeah, so he was he was just flying and uh, he was not flying. He was he was uh, doing bicycle in in all the state, and I thought like that's amazing. And he's not he's not doing any harm to anyone. So that's that's really cool. And I think uh, we will see in the future who who did it the best. Uh, I think yeah. only history will judge it. But uh, so far, I I think it's really important not only to take care of health, like uh, our body, but also our mental health and uh, I think like being trapped in inside your house unfortunately I live in a really big house and I can move from one place to the other but yeah. some people that live in a really small flat they go like crazy and I can understand that and I'm absolutely sure that uh, in the future not 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 so so far from now uh, we will be seeing here things like what is happening in the United States like a reopen I don't care about the coronavirus I, I think it makes sense not to ask for that but just to feel like you know like it's it's human nature to feel fear and um, i can i don't support it but i kind of comprehend what is going on and yeah. um yeah what for both of you and i'll start with you gail um have you thought about and what do you think the, the future of photography looks like either for you or for for the industry i mean I, how do you feel we're coming back from this have you given it thought well, and, i think you know i think we're gonna have to utilize uh the the new technology for a while you know for example I started a side business um, on doing family, high-end family films, you know, bi- biographical films, like a Ken Burns film, yeah. where I would do um, interviews with people's loved ones, and then I'd take their old footage or photographs and combine it into, like, a, a movie. Oh, that's story. great. And um, I think the time is perfect for that when this is over. I've already gotten a couple of inquiries, and but I think... I think I'm going to have to find a way to interview them remotely, yeah. you know, kind of mm-hmm. like uh, Charles Jessler's doing those remote portraits. Yeah. We had Charles on here and he's doing uh, the faces of zoom and he's shooting yeah. his portraits remotely and it, it, they're, they're fantastic and they're very moving. And, uh, in, and Charles is, has a natural ability to connect with people and talk with them at an emotional level. So <laughs> even though there's distance, he still evokes emotion and connects with people, which is an amazing thing to do over this. And, and- uh, and being isolated, you've never had an easier time to actually, I was talking to you about this, to yeah. actually shoot remotely. And, and you can literally set up two iPhones and, and a microphone yeah. and shoot remotely and have different camera angles at a time when, you know, several years ago, you probably wouldn't have been able to do, you know, that. And it's exactly. A, and and I, I keep imagining like, oh, my God, what would this have, what would have been like if this hit five years ago? Yeah. Right. A whole different story. And then imagine, I, doing, yeah. imagine going through this with no internet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I you want to see the world go into I mean, chaos, the internet world. goes down. Forget about it. It's all over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Woodstock, okay. I went to Woodstock. There was no phone. There was no email. It's like, but we found each other. Go figure, you know. Going to Cuba right. for me was tough enough, okay? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> it's like you got to go. Know, you, don't know. you don't know what you don't know, you know? So it, it yeah. happens slowly, but... I think back at 1918, geez, you know? yeah. I, wow. And S1, how about you? Have you, have you given much thought of like how maybe you have to revamp yourself or how the future looks or? Um, I think, I think um, you know, I, I, the only thing I, I, I think about now, it's like the next time I'll do a trip, I will enjoy it like as never before, uh, no matter what it is. And um, I think about what is going to happen with our industry is that it will become more like globalized than it was before. Like, as I told you before, I think this thing, these kind of things like uh, conferences, uh, festivals or you name it will keep uh, happening like this. And we will have like this option to go like, uh, you know, like have like a physical 
a festival or do like a physical photo shoot or maybe you just go and do something like what uh, you know like like what gail is saying and i think it's amazing because it's we are creatives no matter if we're photographers or filmmakers or artists we are creatives and uh, that that thing i think really push us to to do some new stuff and uh i think it will it will open new markets for people i am really positive about future even though like right now it looks really really like dark yeah from so um i have a couple more end questions for you guys and i, I knew that uh, we would be having this conversation and could con continue for hours with you guys i had no doubt about yeah. that uh if there's anybody out there that wants to th throw a question before i get to the final questions please use the q a right now and uh, we'll we'll get those questions out to uh, to our guests um uh one thing is i want to ask is what do you find yourself missing the most right now gail please <laughs> <laughs> Going somewhere, yeah. <laughs> getting on a plane and going somewhere. Really, yeah. I do miss that. Um, I, I, if your if your China trip wasn't signed all full, I might be signing up for that. As you and me both, yeah. I already, I already claimed the first dropout slot. You're, so you're welcome. Too. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you're totally welcome to join me. I mean, um, yeah, I, I think the same as Gail, like. I really miss to be in, in an airplane. You know, I, I feel I have been thinking a lot about this. It's like I, I get used to being in an airplane, so I, I wasn't excited anymore. So I was like, you know, another airplane, what movie I'm going to watch, I'm going to sleep. Uh, oh, that awful 12 hours trip. Now I'm like, you know, I can wait to be sitting in an airplane <laughs> looking through the window. Like, you know, like uh, those things, I really miss them a lot. And uh, be able to yeah just discover our planet and um just have that feeling of having your camera having the you know this amazing light everything is working and you just press the shutter and you got this amazing picture and then you lay on your bed like i did it it's like <laughs> i really miss that feeling i really miss I it smiles too you know? has there been something throughout this that uh, you're going to come out of this looking at differently because i mean certain things like you think about like before i used to love going to the movie theater i'm like i i on an opening night sitting next to tons of people and and having that group feeling of laughing or crying or or uh, the emotional shared response or a concert that were packed in your you know sardines and like i can't imagine that at this point right now i know we'll probably yeah. get back there but right now and also like you know simple little things like hey you know we're all having a big birthday party that person's actually gonna blow and spit on a birthday cake <laughs> and you're gonna eat it like wait a minute <laughs> that's that's like hmm <laughs> that seems like an old custom <laughs> that we shouldn't do anymore shaking hands like is there something like you like right now that seems like you know eight weeks ago you didn't even question it that now just seems like oh geez bizarre yeah. to you well, for me um i i might not eat meat you know, just because it's like, oh. With the Did you see I Wendy's can't. is running out of hamburger at their, their yeah, fast well, food places? Yeah. <laughs> on the other flip side, you know, I had tickets for Jackson Brown on June 16th, yeah. which was postponed. But I can tell you when it's happening again, I'll be there. Yeah. I, I, no, yeah. proud or not, I'm going to go. <laughs> What what is if everything went back to normal? What's the one thing you miss that you would want to do? Like, ah, oh, it, it's all open back up. What's the first thing you want to rush out and do? You're asking me. I yeah, definitely like. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, like, I'm definitely dying to go to Russia. <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's something. Go. It's Hop probably the, the first next plane to Russia. Yeah, the first sense. one. Yeah. I'll be. I'll be the first one there, and the, you know, it's it's something I really want to do. It's also because I have a project there that I want to explore about uh, some some community there that I've been really interested in, yeah. and um, yeah, I mean, I think it's just that, and uh, you know, it's like uh, I really miss like. Uh, Especially in in Colombia, we have this um, tradition of hugging each other, and you know we, we really touch each other. Yeah. So we're like you you just you just come like with a hug to say hi, and uh, you know like we used to kiss a lot, like Mwah, hello, how are you, stuff like that. I, I don't miss the kiss part. I, <laughs> I never like it anyway. I think it's good, but I really miss hug. like a good hug. You can't a replace. good hug from your friends, and don't be afraid to hug someone. So. Yeah. 
as, as I know I can do it, I will do it to as many people as I can, you know. You know it's, it's sometimes these simple pleasures. I, I, like there's a, a sushi place. I've probably been to more times than any other restaurant <laughs> in Rhinebeck, New York. And they've been closed since the, the start of this. And uh, mm-hmm. and Wednesday they opened back up. And I, 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 I sent a message <laughs> to, the, to the owner. And I'm like, I, can I call in my order right now? I will be there at 1130 on Wednesday. And I was there 1130 on Wednesday. I got my sushi <laughs> and I was so happy. It was like my, it was such a great thrill to, to have that food again. Gail, what about you? Well, I'd probably go into the, into the <coughs> and I'd go to MoMA because I missed the Dorothea Lang uh, exhibit, unfortunately. And um, then I would probably go and take a walk on the boardwalk at the Jersey Shore on a Saturday night. <laughs> take oh. off from Bruce. Yeah, we did have a question that came in, and it's to both of you, actually. Uh, and um, um, they said uh, to Galen Esteban, uh, I've noticed lately that there's a, uh, a distinction between being called a travel photographer and a journalist who covers news and events around the world. Do you travel just to take beautiful shots, uh, or is there a social political uh, view to what you shoot? Well, for me, um, I would have to, like I said, I've been more of a soft traveler. I've never really felt like a journalist. That's not to say that I haven't found my way into situations like that. You know, like um, my daughter and I, we were in Istanbul and we came out of the underground and we were literally in the middle of a protest. And um, my instincts made me go running toward the protest. Her instincts made her go back and lean against uh, a lamppost. And when it was all kind of finished, I looked back I'm like, where's, where's my daughter? And she was standing there. I said, oh, I'm sorry. You know, and she said, don't worry, mom. I was keeping an eye out for you. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so she's the, she's the sane one. <laughs> but no, I've always, I've always had more of a softer, um, uh, look at the uh, cultures yeah. Myself. yeah for me it's it's little things like just getting together with family i mean it, you know it, you put this a couple of forward a couple months you know and it was you know say it was in november or something like that and uh around thanksgiving time it was like we couldn't actually if we were all separated we wouldn't be gathering for meals or we wouldn't be you know it's like it's very weird you know, my, my mother's in, in florida right now and uh, she usually goes down for the winter and, and she's not in new york and uh like i cannot see her right now you know if you go to florida you're, you have to sign that you're going to be there quarantine self-quarantine for 14 days so wow. we're separated now and uh yeah. it's it's strange to have family in all different places and, and not able to be together and share moments like that um what uh you know one of the last questions i always ask people is uh what have you seen in the last week or two that uh has brought a smile to your face or made you laugh or given you hope uh what's uh what is is there has there been a moment for me it's always been you know um that that seven o'clock uh cheering for the the workers but this week it was the sushi the sushi made me really happy (laughs) has there been a moment or something that you've experienced or seen someone's artwork or you know there was a you know you'll see these people reading beautiful poetry or taking a moment to sing out a window Has, has there been something for you that just like there's hope for humanity. I'm going to be okay. <laughs> for me, it's music. It's seeing these ensembles, you know, whether it's a choir or the New York Philharmonic on Zoom. I mean, for me, that's like, wow, very inspiring. Yeah. And for, for you- me, it was, um, I have always admired Jimmy Nelson. I don't know if you know this photographer. No. And he just, he just uh, did a, a live stream on Instagram last week. And uh, what he said was so inspiring that I, I just felt like I want to travel again after this talk, you know, after what he said, after how he feels, how to approach uh, people and how to approach uh, the, the communities he, he photographed. And uh, it inspired me a lot. I felt so full of uh, energy and love about what he said that then I realized how important our, you know, like all these live streams and all these things, because I felt like that made my day. I was yeah. really happy. So that made me smile. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, and we have to keep looking for the positivity and, and the hope and uh, keep plugging on. Um, right before we wind up with the last couple of things, I just want to um, uh, say next week, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to um, having uh, a, a couple new guests on. Um, they're uh, fantastic. Uh, they're both actually not really 
photographers there. Well, Frank Mio is a, is a rep and uh, Annika is a, a producer and, uh, and they're fabulous, but they're part of the, the artistic community and uh, their voice and, and uh, their work with photographers, I think is, is going to be uh, really a different kind of slant and very important. Yeah. And they're going to have a lot to say. So I'm really psyched to have them on. Um, and also, um, as uh, chairman of APA New York, uh, I want to say thank you to APA for providing a community to people, and we're here there for you. Whether you know you just want to talk or anything like that, and please reach out and subscribe to us on uh, uh, on YouTube because uh, you can watch all the past episodes and what's upcoming. And uh, your likes uh, really kind of uh, help us and make comments. And please reach out to me if you have uh, any further questions or you just want to say hi, or if you want to have, uh, say, I got a guest that would be fabulous, or you want to say, why don't you discuss this, or uh, why aren't people discussing this? I'm easy to reach at chairman at apanewyork.com. Um, and uh, if you go to the, our website, you'll have all these links. And uh, also we try and put up other people's uh, blogs and information and other shows we're doing and information of what's going on in the community so those are all uh wonderful places to look um guys where do people find you and and your work um i have some links but how would i post them we'll post those up for you and uh but uh, you can just say them out loud right now and then we'll post them out okay well um probably uh, my most current place is to find me on like a woman so it's like a woman dot us and then I'll bring you to the website and um, an introduction to some of the women in the film. That's wonderful. So, the, so you can track me down. That's the easiest way. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Esteban, for you? Yeah, I just I just wrote it in the chat, but it's Esteban oh, Toro M. And that's my website too, that you can check uh, some of my work and you can see the China video too. So, so if, a, if a photographer was crazy enough to enter this world right now, what advice would you give them? Be patient. Yeah, um, I would. I would probably tell them to um, diversify and um, be open to different opportunities that you might have not thought about. You know, because no. sometimes uh, the mistakes have been in my life have been has have led to the most fulfilling experiences. So. And uh, I want to I want to add to that that uh, I said being patient because uh, photography is always about being patient. Like uh, Gail just said it, like he, she wait for for days uh, in one of your photographs. <laughs> yeah, you wait for days just standing there, and photography is always gonna be like that. Like yeah, and get used to frustration. Like uh, yeah, we cannot go outside now, but yeah, you can be outside and you can not get a single picture in one month that, that you're traveling because you have bad luck, and then you have amazing pictures. You know, it's always about that. So we have to get used to it, I think. Before I knew <laughs> I even wanted to be a photographer, I, I, as a child, I loved National Geographic. I'm like, oh, I would love to be like, you know, out, you know, it's in safari shooting the, the wild cats and stuff like that until I realized what they're actually doing to get those shots of sitting in a shed for three or four days. I'm like, yeah, no, I don't have Anyway, years. I don't have patience. <laughs> I can't do it. So, you know, and, and I also thought like, oh, wouldn't it be great to be a war journalist and be like, and then I'm like, wait a minute, no, <laughs> it wouldn't have to be a special kind of person to do that. They have bullets whizzing by you and explosions. It's like, and, I, and my heart goes out to those people. Um, and uh, I want to thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah. You've been wonderful, thank wonderful you, guests. Um, and uh, is there any kind of, uh, kind of last parting words that you want to give? Because I, I know I've asked certain photographers always, like, you know, sort of whether it's a mantra or a piece of thing that, that they repeat to themselves or wake up with. And one of my early guests said, uh, and it, it's resonated me since, uh, is when you wake up, create before you consume. And uh, I thought that was a beautiful thing because we're so quick to grab our cell phone and check our email to take a moment and do something for us and to create or do something. It doesn't even have to be, you know, break out the camera. It's just to do something that is not that consuming mass thing. Is there something for you guys that you say, well, on an end note, this is something I, you know, that my dad told me or a photographer told me that, you know, it's a beautiful piece of parting piece of well, wisdom. I would say, I would say stay uh, curious. And um, my father told me um, when I was afraid to do something, he would tell me, what's the worst thing that could happen? And when mm. I thought about that, I could never think of anything all that bad, you know? Yeah. <laughs>
I, I think it, 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 never be afraid of rejection. You know, I think that makes us more powerful. What's the worst could happen? You could fall off a cliff or get hit by a train. But yeah, but, 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 <laughs> but no, I don't yeah. be fearful to take uh, things outside your realm of comfort. And I think that's no. the most important thing. And I, I know that's what you're saying, but I don't recommend getting on train tracks and stuff like that. <laughs> How about you, Esteban? I'm surprised my father said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> my, da my dad's quote was, uh, what, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I I have been discussing with this with friends, and it's like uh, you have we all have to accept that, that we have like some bad days uh, during yeah. this time. So it's not it's not bad if you just wake up and you feel you don't want to do anything. Don't feel don't feel guilty about it because many many people it's feeling guilty about like you know like it's been a week and I have been like just watching movies and eating and doing nothing and it's it's okay. I mean we're in quarantine. We're not in a contest of who's gonna become the best photographer or whatever in this time. It's like if if you don't feel it, just just go with it and accept it and don't blame yourself for it. Just just appreciate it. We have an amazing time to staying home and uh, just do nothing and that's that's okay i'm feeling sad and crying and call your friends call your relatives or just be isolated if you want like do what you feel you have to do just follow that if you feel one day happy just enjoy it and that's it yeah i, I think it's very important what was that gail i said i like that Estevana. yeah i think it's very important to do that but at the same time you know uh don't let yourself uh become a couch potato you know because it's oh, very yeah. easy to say you know I'm not showering today. I'm not doing this and let yourself go. I think you, it's very important to recognize your feelings. Like I hid from my, my, my the demons and, uh, and, and didn't talk about it and didn't say I was getting scared and didn't say I was putting on the brave face and, and saying, you know, like, Oh, everything's going to be fine. But in deep inside, I was like, Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay. And you need to talk about it. So um, no matter who they are, reach out and just say hi to someone. Uh, pick a yeah. different person each day make sure they're all right even the ones that you think oh they're fine they're probably the ones you actually really need to reach out to yeah so the ones that are always putting on the brave face are sometimes the ones that need it the most so reach out say hi to people make sure that you're okay that your emotional things and don't hide from it uh, talk about it talk to other people we're a big community we're here to support each other i want to thank you guys so so much and i can't wait to give you Thanks all big you. hugs when i get to see you and go to china and shoot wonderful things with you, thank you so much we'll see you next thursday for open talk Guys, thank you. Thank you, and thank you all. Stay well. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye, guys.